All right, I'm going to talk about a topic right now that it's impossible to be balanced about. So I'm just going to try and give some of my impressions of what's happening currently with Israel and Gaza. So the topic today is really centered around why a rational and unemotional conversation about the Israel-Palestine conflict can't be had. Uh, and it's regrettable that it's so. Uh, I don't think that there are many people left who have the ability to give a nonpartisan, uh, really, um, you know, middle of the road uh, opinion on this because almost everyone falls in a certain category uh, of this issue. So, to state my own, I do want to say for starters that I did serve in the mid 2000s in the Israel Defense Forces. I have uh, both of my parents were Israeli citizens, right? So, from birth, I had dual Israeli and American citizenship. For those of you that are curious, uh, you don't automatically get Israeli citizenship if you're Jewish, but you do qualify for it. So if you're Jewish, you can get your Israeli citizenship by applying for it uh, through a process. I automatically had it because I had parents that were born over there. So just to get that out of the way, and as such, because I served there and I do have family there, uh, you know, you can guess that I'm more, much more on the side of the Israeli people on this than I would be uh, uh, neutral or pro-Palestinian. Although I, I will say, I don't think that we can expect a resolution of this conflict exclusively due to a military offensive, right? Uh, it's been tried before. Uh, it hasn't worked until now. Uh, people keep trying to tell the Netanyahu government to go all the way, not to stop, to basically, you know, I've heard people say, oh, turn Gaza into a parking lot. Um, I don't know what that means. Uh, at, at a certain point, uh, I think that we have to think about really what the solution might be long term. And we, we don't know what it is because originally it was thought that once Israel withdrew all of its settlements from the Gaza Strip, not from the West Bank, but just from the Gaza Strip in 2005, that the conflict would become much more easily easy to resolve because it would have much more of a clear border. There wouldn't be these discrepancies. And that, that wasn't true. Uh, I actually was living in Israel at the time. And there was a lot of, you know, very stiff opposition to that plan, which was called the Gaza Withdrawal. And I remember it very well because I was entering the army immediately as this was uh, finishing. So I wasn't a part of it, but I did live through the whole uh, issue at the time. And then since then, there have been three previous offensives by the Israelis into Gaza. Now... Uh, a lot of the people who are on the YouTube and other video making spaces are commenting a lot about the issue of freedom of speech regarding Gaza and, and, and Israel and whether there should be uh, more discussion and more latitude for it. And to be honest with you, I am always going to be in favor of more discussion and more freedom of expression even if it is offensive, because I am a staunch First Amendment supporter. And I do believe that there is no such thing as hate speech and that people should be able to say things that are hurtful and even uh, inflammatory, so as long as they don't incite illegal violence, right? So if you're going to be in the comments uh, calling me all sorts of names, uh, it's okay. I can take it. Uh, but I don't think that you're going to be changing any minds if that's what you're trying to do. Uh, now, uh, in terms of other issues, people want to focus a lot on the U.S. foreign aid to Israel. And 
my personal opinion is that it, it there shouldn't be foreign aid to any of these countries. It doesn't matter if it's Israel or not. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, people try to make an exception or they try to uh, make this sort of distinction where they say, oh, uh, it's a little bit different because we get back so much because the Israelis buy uh, so much U.S. military hardware. Uh, no, because as a libertarian, you know, I'm again stating my opinion, as a libertarian and as somebody who believes that we should rein in spending as much as possible, and even though this is not uh, a terribly large chunk of our deficit and our ultimate U.S. debt, which is numbering in now the tens of trillions of dollars. Uh, no, I don't support corporate welfare uh, in to the defense contractors, whether it's in support of Israel or whether it's to the Philippines or whether it's to uh, any of the Gulf states or anything. I, I just don't. It's it's a consistent position I take. Uh, I, it is, you know, I, as stated, I support the defense of the state of Israel, uh, but I think that it actually is a problem the way that they've been doing it. And um, I get a lot of criticism from the Israeli American community about it, but there are a few Israeli advocates, in fact, who would agree with me. In fact, Rudy Rockman, who is one of the more active uh, campus advocates, he's actually come out and said that it, it's not a good idea to continue to take money for um, this, for, for d defense of Israel from the U.S. government through the foreign aid budget. And uh, I, I want it to be that people start to realize that you can't just think that this is going to last forever. <laughs> Eventually, there could be an administration. Now, the Biden administration so far is not clawing back the aid. But there could be an administration in, in you know, the not-so-distant future that says we don't believe in it simply because we don't support Israel anymore. It could happen. Uh, the U.S. does change foreign policy from time to time. I'm not saying it will happen, but uh, things like that do happen. And, and if you are truly a supporter of Israel, you should want it to be an independent country, right? And I, I have always stated, and it's gotten me no friends on any side of the spectrum because the Israeli support um, uh, the Israeli supporter side generally is very much in support not only of foreign aid but of more of it they despise anyone who, who want, they, they call you basically an anti-israel agitator if you question that format of the relationship even though like I said, my point is that it creates a dependency. It is not in the long-term interests of the Israeli government. It's also not in the long-term interests of the American government to be giving uh, military hardware to any foreign country. Uh, I do believe that we should simply sell the hardware, try to keep the technology as secure as possible, but to sell it in limited quantities if there is cooperation between the Israeli and American government, I think it should be, or companies, I should say, uh, that's fine. Uh, I don't have a problem with it, uh, but I do see a problem with the way things are happening right now. Now, I saw a video yesterday. I tried to record this video yesterday. It didn't really come out as crisp as I wanted, but I did see another video from a creator that I thought was fantastic. And... This guy is Long Beach Griffey. I think he's one of the funniest people on YouTube. And here we go. Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> What's up? What's going on? What's hey, good? big fan, man. I, I love your stuff. Um, I have a question. Um, are you going to make a video about uh, what's going on in Israel right now? Wait, what's going on in Israel? Are y'all doing terrorist shit again? That's what the American news be saying. So What? No, that that's not what's happening. Oh, Y'all finna do 9-11 part two, huh? We didn't do 9-11 part one. <laughs> You're right. That was us. It's kind of a shame and a little disappointing that you don't know what's going on in Israel right now, let alone talking about it. Nigga, I don't even know where Israel is located on the map. All I know is brown people be blowing up laundromats and teaching three-month-old babies how to shoot rocket launchers at the U.S. Army.
the United States media is fucked up. <laughs> no, the United States as a whole in all of its entirety is fucked up. <laughs> but what, 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 what's going on, man? People are dying, homeless, being oppressed. You have a format. It's your job as a YouTuber, an influencer to raise awareness and keep people informed on these issues. No, it's not my job or any other influencer's job to keep people informed. Just because we have a format does not mean we are obligated to speak on issues, especially if we don't know anything about those issues. So get informed, man. Don't you care about what's going on in Israel? I didn't know what the fuck was going on until three minutes ago. Okay, I'm going to make a tweet, all right? Thank you, Griff. Mm, shit is getting crazy in Israel. Looks like terrorists are terrorizing each other. <laughs> Free Palestine. Dude, what the fuck? What did you expect? I'm Long Beach Griffey. Listen, man. Our government said all y'all do is blow shit up and drive Uber. Okay? The U.S. has never said a positive thing about y'all. So it puts me in a pretty tough spot. All right? I, I, I. Don't speak up on issues that don't concern you, blood. Who the fuck are you? None of your business. Hey, bitch ass. Get your ass in that motherfucking house and wash my dirty drawers before I fuck your wife again, nigga. Oh, my God. Okay, right away. I'm so, so sorry. Griffey, please use your format to inform. Fair pass time. What the fuck just happened? Anyways. Why can't I use the bathroom in the back? You don't work here. <laughs> So yeah, that that is one of the best videos I see, and I, I think a lot of people are going to be like, "Well, was he serious about being on one side or the other, or does he actually not care?" Uh, I think it doesn't matter. I think if if a video is funny, it doesn't even matter what the person's opinion is, and that we have to set aside this notion that that people need to be on my side or your side. Or that sides even, you know, the sides exist, but in comedy, I think the only sides that matter are the sides being split. And now I know that turned the corny meter up a little bit, but uh, we need to remember that the majority of Americans don't really care about what's happening in the Middle East anyway. Uh, I think that was Long Beach Griffey's real point, which is that uh, people have enough problems here. We have a very uh unfair uh social media system right now we have a lot of censorship going on obviously not quite the crisis that they have in gaza and israel right now where you have literal warfare but uh it's hard for people to really empathize with what's going on across the world when there's there's separate crises that are going on right here uh i certainly you know i've gotten the updates from a family member over there uh, and uh, it does concern me, and I do hear a lot of people talking about it. But you don't. At the same time, you don't have a lot of power as far as what you can do over here. I do know people who they go to these demonstrations, pro-Israel demonstrations. They think that that was really going to be a means to change what's going on in the Middle East. And it isn't. Uh, the truth is, what has to, what's going on has to be resolved over there. Uh, there are people like Kyrie Irving that are saying that uh, what's happening over there is taking up a lot more of his time than actually uh, working on on uh, winning an NBA title and everything, uh, which is an odd thing to say. Uh, maybe a little bit concerning for the coaches, fans, and uh, NBA officials, but. Uh, if he says, oh, I'm very concerned, uh, you know, he says it's about his, um, you know, he says it's a, he, he talks to God about it. Um, that's an issue of personal conviction. And I don't think that he is doing this in order to simply troll or to be malicious or something. Um, Kyle Kalinske made a video today about uh, Rashida Tlaib and her decision to uh, go and here we go. So he went to Michigan. Let's hear what he says about Talib's. Uh, Talib is the 
Palestinian American representative from Michigan. I think the Michigan Fifth uh, District, if I'm not mistaken, and it's in the Detroit area. And she confronted President Joe Biden over her over his perceived bias towards Israel. Right. So here's what he says: It's beyond pathetic. And by the way, he gave a speech in Michigan, and he repeatedly referred to Rashida Tlaib as Rashid Tlaib. And he said, oh, you know, I respect your intelligence and I'm looking out for your mother in the West Bank because her mom is, or grandmother in the West Bank because her grandma's in the West Bank. He repeatedly calls her Rashid Tlaib because apparently Rashida Tlaib pressed Biden a little bit when he landed in Michigan. He had some, she had some words with him and was like, you got to stop with this with, you got to like at least threaten to cut off Israel's funding, cut off their weapons, sanction them, something, something. Instead of actually doing anything, Biden pretends like he's going to do something and just gives a speech and calls her Rashid Tlaib and says, oh, I'm with you and I'm going to say some flowery words. And this is why everybody can't fucking stand the Democrats, because it's all fucking talk. The Republicans are like, hey, I'm a giant piece of shit and I'm not even going to try to hide it. I'm a colossal piece of shit. And the Democrats are like, me, bro, I'm such a good person. I'm on the right side of history. I care so deeply. And by the way, I'm going to continue to arm a butcher and a war criminal who's massacring civilians on purpose. And when you ask me about it, I'm going to say, no, I'm not going to fucking answer it. Piss off. And then the press is going to giggle with me because they like Democrats. <laughs> when if Trump said the same shit, it would have been on him. So what Kalinsky is also referring to is uh, Biden was doing a fake uh, test drive on a Ford F-150, I think a uh, hybrid or electric. And somebody tried to ask him a question about Israel. And he said, oh, you can ask me the question if you get in front while I hit the pedal, while, while I press the pedal. So um, Kyle Kalinske was saying, well, obviously it's a joke, but if Trump, Donald Trump had said the same thing, then nobody would have been laughing. It would have been the major uh, news story. People would have said he, he was threatening journalists, even if he was joking. And uh, that's a separate thing that I think progressives are very frustrated, uh, maybe justifiably frustrated, because they think that they don't have any advocate in government. They, they do have people like Rashida Tlaib. They're directly connected to the Palestinian cause. They feel that the two-party system has failed the Palestinian people. And they don't think that the Democrats adequately represent the um, the concerns of the left wing of the American political spectrum that they're the, the U.S. government is supporting a colonialist occupier or butcher as uh, Kyle Kalinske calls it and look um, I disagree with the way Kyle Kalinske characterizes the conflict but at the same time I think he's calling uh, out the Biden administration for talking out of both sides of their mouth. You can't claim to be on two sides of the same conflict. Kyle Kalinske is clearly on the side of the Palestinians. There are other creators that are very clearly on the side of the Israelis. I'll get to one in a minute. And uh, that's really the problem here, that we need the United States to either take a clear stance on the conflict, that's one idea, or... Okay, and this is a, this is an option. I'm not going to throw it away. Uh, not be involved, and I think that not being involved might actually be the better option. Uh, the U.S. Or, or any other mediator can't really resolve the problem between the Israelis and the Palestinians. That they would have to decide whether they do want to negotiate or not, uh, and the the decision has to be on them. It cannot be on the United Nations. It can't be on the U.S. It can't be on the European Union. There's just this um, this this failed uh, approach that's that's been going on since, since in fact I was a kid that a rules based international order can impose a solution on the Israeli Palestinian conflict and it it's just not the case. Uh, if it was the case, it would have been resolved 25 years ago instead of continuing today. Uh, so that's as far as uh, Kyle Kalinsky is concerned. But you know. Aside from actually disagreeing with his position, I think it's actually a good video. It shows really the hypocrisy of the American political system. Um, this is an issue that I think has 
there's been a development in the last day or two, but Dave Rubin blocked Nick Fuentes on Twitter after being challenged to discuss the Israel-Palestine conflict. And uh, I think, you know, as somebody who's listened to Dave Rubin for a long time, I'm not really a fan of Nick Fuentes, but, uh, you know, I'm against all of the attempts to silence him, to put him on the no-fly list, 100% against it. Uh, He has all the rights as any other creator. Um, uh, I am disappointed that Dave Rubin blocked Nick Nick Fuentes uh, after being challenged to a debate. Uh, But apparently, and this is going to be a very interesting development, uh, Nick Fuentes is going to debate Robert Barnes, the lawyer uh, who is frequently on the side of of people. I think he was he was one of the people who was representing representing the Covington uh, school boys who were smeared by the media. And I think he might even have represented uh, Alex Jones in the past in some of the lawsuits against him. So uh, that will be a, a very interesting debate. Uh, Nick Fuentes's position is that you can't be America first and then also have all of this uh, kowtowing to Israel and, and all the time talking about Israel and, and yada, yada, yada all the time with Israel. Uh, Lauren Chen actually made a good video on this today where I, you know, um, I largely agree with her. I don't think that there, there's really much to say about reasons that I disagree with her, but uh, we can't have so much of the American political discussion focused on something that's happening in the Middle East. It is important to the world. It is important to the people living in the region. It's important to the people who are under threat or actually losing their lives over there. But it isn't really something that can be solved by involving the United States even more than it is. Um, So I am genuinely disappointed that Dave Rubin did this. Uh, Maybe not surprised, but yes, I am disappointed. And no, if you have this uh, approach where you say, oh, don't burn this book, that's that's the name of his book, and and you want to talk about ideas, not personalities. Well, uh, Nick Fuentes challenged him on the basis of an idea. Now, you, you don't have to believe that he has good faith, but uh, you don't have to block him. You can probably um, find somebody else to debate, debate Nick Fuentes. By the way, Fuentes has tried to debate in the past with people like uh, Ben Shapiro on this. They have the same reaction. There is this tendency on the mainstream of the right where – you think that positions like this, where you, where you say, oh, with the U.S. and Israel, they should have this inseparable partnership. You think that that should be beyond debate. It should be something that's bipartisan. It should be completely the consensus. Uh, that's not really in keeping with a free society. Everything's up for debate. Even things that I agree with are up for debate. Uh, I'm fine with debating people who are against the Second Amendment, who are pro-abortion. Uh, even though I find their opinions to be 100% wrong. I think it's, it's worth it to debate people who disagree with you because there's always an audience out there that uh, could learn from your discussion, even if you don't convince the person you're talking to of the validity of your position. So uh, not happy with it, um, but I will probably check out the Robert Barnes stream or – uh, the replay, more likely, because I think that Robert Barnes is an intelligent guy. I think Nicholas Fuentes can be intelligent many times. Um, even even many times I don't agree with him, but, uh, you know, very interesting views on certain things in terms of, um, you know, Christianity and the church in, in American society. As a non-Christian, uh, I don't agree with him, but uh, he does bring up a lot of the issues of how Uh, religion is integral to American society. So uh, we'll we'll be checking back on that sometime. Uh, There is something I do want to say about, um, you know, some of the reports that are coming out of there where the AP is claiming that their facility in Gaza that was bombed, uh, by the way, they were warned before it was bombed. So all the reporters were able to reach safety before the missile hit, but they're claiming that they were unaware 
of any Hamas intelligence operation in their building, uh, despite the fact that the Atlantic apparently reported in 2014 that AP writers are regularly, um, they regularly encounter Hamas people barging into their office and threatening them. Uh, so you have to choose who you believe. Do you believe currently the AP saying that they were completely unaware of any Hamas operation, if it did exist, and I don't know whether it did exist or did not exist, reports say that it did. Um, so don't blame me. Don't shoot the messenger. Okay, don't be Hamas. <laughs> Just kidding. But in any case, um, uh, no, it, I, I think you have to decide. Um, do you start to doubt all of the reporting from the past or just the reporting from very recently? And it's not an easy choice. Uh, I would not be surprised if the AP is lying. But um, sometimes you do get reports that are completely falsified. And you're seeing just by the way that I have to sort of navigate around the topic how difficult it is to be fair and unbiased about this. Uh, I do know that there have been um, attempts by the Palestinian militant groups, terror groups, to use press credentials in the past, in fact, in order to create, uh, in order to support terror activity, right? They give press credentials to people or they, they paint a, a van with the words press on it or, or a truck in some cases and try to pass um, usually military equipment uh, through a checkpoint, things like that. Uh, it is something that does happen. Uh, I'm not going to say it happens every day, but uh, people have to be aware that this is not something that would be a first-timer, right? Um the Hamas is not a state actor, technically. They do run the government in Gaza, but it's a little bit of an unofficial de facto capacity. So what they would be doing is saying, well, we're not bound by the rules of international conflicts. Therefore, we're going to do things like this. Uh, no, that, then th this is one of the issues that people always talk about. Asymmetric warfare, that Israel has a uh, disproportionate advantage over Hamas and, and the Palestinians because of their military technology. On the other hand, Hamas and the Palestinians don't necessarily abide by other rules, right? The rules of engagement where you don't, um, you know, locate military equipment within civilian areas. Uh, it might be, you know, their excuse would be, well, where else is there going to go? Gaza is a very dense place. Um, and uh, I'm not making excuses for anyone. Uh, I'm just laying it out here that um, these things do happen. It would not be surprising to me if Hamas did locate uh, rocket launchers or other military equipment within an office in uh, where, where the AP is for a long period of time. Uh, finally, last thing is... Uh, where is the real tragedy going on in the United States? It's not in the issue of the conflict itself, because, like I said, the conflict is happening over there. Uh, we live over here. We can't resolve the conflict over here. Uh, but the tragedy starts when people start to think, well, because of what's happening over there, I can, in turn, commit an act that will exact my revenge on the people that are doing this over there. So this is something that happened recently in L.A. The detectives virtually back in April to discuss claims that rapper T.I. and his wife drugged and raped her. Excuse me, this was the wrong clip, as you might guess. Uh, but here we go. So. Ken Sharon, prior to the attack here at the restaurant, witnesses say that a caravan of about 20 to 30 cars waving Palestinian flags came up the block. They stopped right here in front of this sushi restaurant where there are a bunch of Jewish people outside dining. And witnesses say they started shouting things like uh, Jewish people kill children and down with Israel. <laughs> God. 
A brawl in front of a Beverly Grove sushi restaurant Tuesday night is being investigated as a possible hate crime. This is 100% certainly a attack, a hate crime on the Jewish Americans of this country. Several witnesses who are afraid to be identified say a caravan waving pro Palestinian flags pulled up to the North La Cienega Boulevard restaurant around 10, where many Jewish people were dining and started shouting anti Semitic slurs. They start cussing about Jews and uh, Israel and uh, what's going on. And then uh, um, suddenly I saw glasses flying over, like. Towards us. Witnesses say some words and gestures were exchanged between the two groups, and then some pro Palestinians jumped from the Jeep and a fight broke out. A man who's not Jewish, seen here in the middle of the chaos, says the pro Palestinians went after him and his two Jewish friends. And I saw one of my friends, he went down, they started hitting his uh, face, his head. Then I realized I had to do something, so, so I saved him. He says three men managed to grab the gold stanchion out of his hands, cut his hand with a knife, and beat him up against an SUV before pepper spraying him. So I realized my eyes start burning, and then after that, all my body start burning. He says he and one of his friends had to be treated at the hospital. Other diners were rushed inside by restaurant employees who called 911. I felt like I was in a war, though. I felt they were prepared. They came to fight. Meantime, Monday night around 9, an Orthodox Jewish man on his way to synagogue near Rosewood and La Brea feared for his life while being chased by two cars of people waving pro Palestinian flags. Chanting Allah Akbar, which is what uh, usually a Palestinian does right before they're about to make uh, commit a terrorist attack. The man who's afraid to reveal his identity says he managed to escape inside his synagogue. And now police are investigating this as a hate crime. And several city leaders, including Mayor Eric Garcetti, have condemned these attacks. For now, reporting live here. I don't need to tell you that over the past year or so, uh, there's been plenty of street violence completely unrelated to this topic, street violence related to Black Lives Matter, street violence related to Antifa, street violence related to uh, just general crime. Uh, it's a lot of anti-white violence, by the way. And I think that that stuff is also not covered enough. Uh, and the media has an interest in suppressing the broader um, spread of violence on the basis of identity in the past few years. They're, they're very interested in hate crimes against certain minority groups, specifically uh, blacks, Mexicans, now Asians, for whatever reason, even though the media also tends to discriminate uh, and, and uh, I, I would say not cover Asians in a very fair way in some cases, especially Indians and uh, you know, some of the propaganda against India is just bizarre. Uh, but uh, I still say, okay, now that I've already acknowledged that there's other violence happening all over the country, it's places like Portland, Seattle, uh, Minnesota, that uh, is already bad. Uh, this is a this is also awful that you're having uh, a conflict that happens in the Middle East. Uh, spilling over to, to here. Uh, in this case, it's Palestinian demonstrators uh, allegedly assaulting Jewish diners and even a person uh, walking to prayers. And uh, it, it actually, now there's one thing that, that makes this a little bit different from some of the other cases of violence on American streets, which is, it's, you know, it might not be important to you, but it's a little bit of a distinction. Um, technically, the pro-Palestinian movement tends to make the case that their fight is not against the Jewish people, it's against the Zionists. Now, a real problem with that claim is that when you start attacking people, as was done here, where they were asking whether the people dining were Jewish, not whether they're Zionists, not whether they're Israelis, whether they were Jewish, uh, that actually disproves your entire claim. Uh, in reality, it has nothing to do with Zionism or Israel or yada, yada, yada. It might have uh, a little bit of a root with that. But ultimately, these people, I would say, do have 
a problem with Jews as they are Jews, not as they are instruments of, of Zionism or of the state of Israel or anything. They have a problem with the Jewish people as they are in existence. And it's one of the things that I think that the um, the Jewish community is kind of uh, full of idiots. It's full of uh, very passive and short-sighted and complacent leadership. Uh, I think that um, one of the things I've recommended to people, and you don't have to be Jewish to take this advice, so don't think that if you're a Lutheran out there or if you're uh, even Muslim, I have no problem with this either. Um, I do believe people need to seriously um, fight for the Second Amendment, uh, try to uh, avail yourself of the Second Amendment, go to a firearms store, uh, try out a few firearms if you haven't already, and, uh, you know, make yourself secure. Don't wait for the police to be your um, defendant, the defender. Don't wait for the media to defend you because they don't have an interest in defending you. Your personal safety is uh, your prerogative. It, it's not somebody else's resp responsibility. It doesn't even matter if you think the police are responsible for your safety. They aren't. And uh, they can just choose to um, not prioritize your case, right? If, if you get attacked, uh, it's not the police. Uh, I mean, you can't make the police give you high priority. They have to decide to do it. And uh, many times they don't. Uh, that's about it. Um, I do want to tell you that today uh, in the afternoon, there will be a new newsletter about the Liz Cheney um controversy that's going on, uh, which I didn't get to do. I've been very busy lately, just haven't had any time. There was a holiday. So there will be a new newsletter. There's also going to be this video on BitChute and on Rumble and Odyssey, where I do a lot of my alternative videos. Uh, so make sure to subscribe to me there. Also follow me on Gab and follow me on Minds and support me financially through Subscribestar if you think it's important enough, not that you should feel obligated. And have a great day.